All right, I've got a Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road. I've got a Colorado Z71, and I've got a Ranger FX4. Now the manufacturers say that these are off-road trucks, but I'm gonna find out just how off-roady they really are. We're gonna do a hill climb. We are gonna run them through a wash at speed. We're gonna get them all flexy and twisty, and we are gonna crawl the pipes. Now, if you wanna see how any of these trucks perform on the pavement, don't worry, we got a video. Just click right here. But for now, let's get dirty. Come on. First up is the Ziggurat of Integrity. Now this obstacle tests a truck's flexibility or articulation. Now in the past, we've brought up all kinds of vehicles, Jeeps, Broncos, Land Cruisers, you name it. And one thing that has always been an advantage is having a disconnecting front sway bar. Now the TRD off-road that we brought, that has the option of a disconnecting front sway bar. It's about $1,000. Will it make a difference? Let's find out. But first we have to take this air dam off the Colorado, but thankfully it's super easy and we won't get in trouble because we own the truck. Yep, we get to experience the Colorado and the Ranger just like you do because we actually own them. So like and subscribe to catch all our videos, including more long-term testing. First up, the Chevy Colorado. Okay, so taking off that air dam really, really helped, but look, like this is not tucked up at all. The good news is that I didn't really come close to hitting my bash plate, which is awesome because it's made out of plastic. Next up, it's the Ford. Well, now that we've got this up in the air, it didn't go quite as far as the Colorado, but there's a couple of things I wanna point out. Number one, we have a step here, which might be a problem later on in our day. But for the Ziggurat, you can see I'm not super tucked up here. The good news is that I have a steel bash plate. That's pretty cool. And I didn't feel the need to take off those air dams in the front because they don't hang down any lower than the bash plate. So like, who cares? And next we have the mighty Tacoma TRD off-road. Sway bar disconnect for the win. A thousand dollars means you too can conquer the ziggurat. Going up to the third step here, I'm super tucked up, didn't have to take off an air dam, and I got a steel bash plate. So I love this hill climb because it is really easy to get wheels off of the ground. It is a great test, and some of our vehicles fail big time. I mean, we took a Tahoe up here, it only went 15 feet. So I'm gonna see how many little off-road nannies I actually have to activate while not relying on momentum. Because remember, as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. All right, so I'm in the appropriate off-road mode. I'm in four-wheel drive high, and we are not going to use momentum here. We are going to go as slow as possible. Two miles an hour, and we are slipping in the first hole. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it into four wheel drive low so we can take advantage of our full on crawl ratio. Crawl ratio here is in the low 40s, but I do have 430 pound feet of torque. Now the Colorado has an automatic rear locker. I cannot select it, which frankly, I wanna be able to select it, right? I, come on, come on, there you go. There you go, girl. So that means I'm gonna get a little bit of wheel slip before the vehicle decides like, oh, I'm gonna lock the rear. I wanna be in control of that, thank you very much. All right, well, that worked, that was pretty easy. All right, here we go in the Ford Ranger, same thing, appropriate off-road mode and a four wheel drive high. And I bet I'm gonna need to go into four low pretty darn quickly. We're gonna get a wheel up there, we're sticking. Yep, right away, we gotta go into four wheel drive low. Now, here's the thing. This has got a crawl ratio of about 48 to 1, but I only have 310 pound-feet of torque. But that better crawl ratio, come on, girl, come on. Come on, there we go, okay. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. Oh, it's real slipping, okay. I do have a selectable locker here. I'm going to click that on. It's on the screen, which I don't really like, but now I should not have a problem. Come on, there she goes. Oh yeah, oh, it's so much better. Now the thing too about having that driver selectable locker, like I knew I was gonna need it, you guys. I knew that was gonna happen. And by pre-selecting your locker, you actually do your part to help keep the trail intact for other people that maybe don't have a locker and need a smoother ride. 
So it's just always a good idea to, you know, tread lightly. Now this is the smaller 2.3 liter engine with 310 pound feet of torque. You can get a larger engine with 400 pound feet, but we ain't got it. Probably make that a little bit easier though. All right, you guys know the drill, four high off-road mode in the taco. Now, all of the other trucks, I've had to go into four low here at this first hole, but I've got slightly better tires on this vehicle with some BFG, so let's see if I can get through it without going into four low. Oh, I did! Oh my God, I did, I got through it. What, is this gonna make it in four high? It might make it in four high, you guys. Are you kidding me? Okay, no, there. All right, now we got it. But we did get higher. We did get higher than all the other ones. Uh, four low, there we go. And let's keep going. There we go, still going. I still have not locked the rear. Still have not locked the rear. Oh, I can hear Toyota's A-Track system kicking in here. Now that's a brake-based traction control system. It's a lot quieter and smoother than it's been in years past, and it means that the Tacoma doesn't need its locker at all on this hill. This thing's gonna go up without locking the rear. Shut up. Oh, 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 it did it. <laughs> it's Taco Tuesday, even though we're shooting on Wednesday. No locker required. You guys, I didn't have to use the rear locker and I didn't even have to think about using the sway bar disconnect. So the taco takes the cake here. Out of all three, I think I liked the Colorado the least just because with that automatic locker, there's a lot of slipping going on. And in the Tacoma, like even without the locker, everything was just really smooth and composed and I was able to go pretty slow and not tear up the trail. And the Ford, eh, I mean, you know, got the job done, but just not my favorite. All right, now we are coming up to a little rock garden slash pipe obstacle course. This really is gonna test our ground clearance and uh, to an extent the forward facing camera. Now I'm in the Ford right now. The Ford and the Chevy both have a way better forward facing camera than what's in the Toyota. The Toyota is a little bit grainy, but I'm definitely gonna need to watch it because getting through here is gonna require pretty precise tire placement. Oh my God, is it gonna do it? Oh, there, okay, we hit there. Okay, now we're gonna turn and I'm gonna try to split these do not have a lot of ground clearance, y'all. Oh, oh, we're up on that rock. All right, now we gotta go slow. Here's the thing with forward facing cameras. They're great for forward facing things, but sometimes you get to a point where you actually need to see down and I don't have this in the forward. Well, we found the skid plate a few times, <laughs> but it's a metal skid plate, so that's good. <laughs> All right, here we go in the Chevrolet Colorado. Again, using that forward facing camera, looking at my spotter as well. All right, now I know, okay, I can see all the rocks in the camera. Slow, he says. This is where left foot braking comes in handy. You're doing it! <laughs> yes, I understand I'm about to hit something. I don't have a lot of crown clearance. I can barely see my spotter's hand, so definitely relying on this camera. There we go. I see where we're going, I see where we're going. All right, not bad, little Colorado, not bad, even with your automatic rear locker. All right, Toyota Tacoma time. And you guys, this camera is not very good, so I'm really gonna have to rely on John, my spotter here. So in all of these vehicles, I've been in four low and um, locked the rear and doing a lot of left foot braking. All right, definitely hit the skid plate again that time, but that's okay, that's what it's there for. We're close on our approach angle up front. Oh, oh, did it! We got it! Yeah, buddy! Ooh, we're gonna hit here again. 
Ooh. Oh, I thought for sure we were in there. Phew. Good job, little taco. You guys, that actually was not as hard as I thought it was going to be. I mean, having it in low range and having these lockers made it great. I really liked the camera in the Ford the best. I feel like it gave me the clearest view. At the end of the day, I mean, they all got through this obstacle pretty much the same. I think that the camera in the Ford Ranger made a little bit of a difference, just made it a tiny bit easier. Now, since these trucks don't really have a lot of ground clearance and they're not really optimized for heavy duty rock crawling thanks to their approach and departure angles, where they should do well is on a flat surface like this sandy wash. And I should be able to have a lot of fun. I mean, assuming like the traction control can like get out of its own way and let me have a little bit of fun, right? All right, here we are in the Ford Ranger. I've got the sand mode on, which automatically locks the rear end, which I do not mind. Traction control is turned off and advanced track is turned off. Which it does let my rear slide around quite a bit. <laughs> but I have quite a bit of understeer. Come on, let's go. It also does not like this chatter at all. Oh, understeer, understeer, understeer. I'm having a left foot brake, trying to keep that turbo spooled up just a little bit. But then I'm also afraid that I'm going to understeer right off in this. Come on, here we go, here we go. So I'm trying to brake get that weight transferred onto the front so that I don't understeer, but that advanced track really seems to be, whoa! <laughs> whoa, that rear end came around. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that was fun. All right, here we go, Toyota Tacoma, sand mode, four wheel drive high, traction control off. Oh, it doesn't like this washboard at all, at all. So I got a left foot brake, try to keep these revs up, try to keep this turbo spooled, but it is not a fan. Oh, get the tail out. That's fun. I really, come on. I feel like I'm manhandling this. I don't feel like I'm in control. Like, I want my out of controls to be in control. Go! Oh my God. You gotta commit to keeping your foot in this and left foot braking so that you can keep that turbo spooled up. The brakes also don't like this washboard. It just skitters on top of them. Yeah, hmm, not my favorite. And now for the mighty Colorado. This is not a dedicated sand mode. This is a general off-road mode. Again, gotta wait for those turbos to spool up, but this seems to be the most responsive of the bunch. Doesn't like chatter. Don't understeer here. There you go. Oh, that was good. That was good, Holly. You did that just right. Get some weight on that nose. Drag the brake, drag the brake, full throttle. Yeah, buddy, here we go, big finish. I just totally dusted those guys out. <laughs> they hate me. The Colorado is definitely the most fun in this high-speed wash, followed closely by the Ford Ranger, but the Tacoma just takes too much effort. Not a fan, not a fan. Now look, this isn't the ZR2 or the Raptor or the TRD Pro version of these trucks, and that is okay. Not everybody needs all of the capability. Sometimes you just need a little tiny bit, right? But here's the thing, you're gonna save a lot of money. I mean, this TRD off-road, you guys, it won in two out of the four categories, and it's $20,000 less than a TRD Pro. Now the Ford it takes the grand prize for that pipe section because we had a really good forward-facing camera. The savings aren't quite as great. If you opt for the FX4 package in the Lariat trim, you'll save about $5,000 over the Raptor, which maybe you wanna do that, maybe not. But if you're satisfied with the lower trim XLT, the Raptor's 13 grand more. Like, why would you do that? Now the Z71 starts at about $42,000 and it won our fun factor. For about six grand, you can get the ZR2, which uh, maybe, I mean, I do like the Multimatic shocks that come on the ZR2, but do not get the Bison package. You guys, it adds like another $12,000 over that. No, 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 no. Now at the end of the day, which one would I buy? Well, I like going fast through a little like rally cross courses. So for me, I'm gonna go with Colorado. But if you like to rock crawl, then you should probably check out the Tacoma. I mean, it's all about your priorities. What is important to you? 
It's your money, spend it how you want. If you wanna know more about these vehicles, check out the blog where we are keeping track of everything that we do over the next year over at Edmunds.com. Thanks for watching. You know what they say, oversteer scares the passenger, understeer scares the driver, and that is correct.